Jessica Teachin is a marketing leader driven by her dual passions of brand impact and consumer-driven insights. She received her MBA at the Kellogg School of Management, expanding her expertise in marketing and strategy. She joined Nike Marketing after business school, and now she's back in Silicon Valley at WhatsApp in, as a leader in brand strategy. And Jess is going to share um, some of her personal story, which I think has great applications for all of us. So Jess, we look forward to hearing what you have to say. Um, so yeah, so starting with like from Detours to Destiny, the journey of becoming in a modern era of change. Um, and yeah, fun intro to my family. You could see my husband, who's been my best friend for the last nine years, um, and also my two little ones. There's Joshua standing there and Jordan. Um, she's six months old. Um, and so we're so, so happy um, uh, to be able to be a mom, a wife, um, first and foremost, as well as a follower of Jesus. So um, I'm just going to share a little bit about uh, my background, really rooting this conversation um, in, in a personal story. Um, and so I started, I went to Cal, so right around the corner. So go Bears for those who are, who are dialing in. Um, I majored in business and uh, Chinese. Uh, following that, um, I was actually went to Apple where um, I was working in Cupertino. Again, not far from a lot of you who are dialed in today. Um, I was working, I joined their finance development program. Um, it was a rotation program, had an amazing time really learning a lot of, um, in accounting as well as strategic project management. Um, they ended up sending me to China, which is why you see that little apple with a China flag. Um, and there I, I had just had an amazing journey with the Lord, uh, really where he um, gave me a huge heart for women uh, who are disadvantaged. Um, and, and really be able to connect them to giving them access to other women um, and providing career training as well as just holistic teaching um, on very similar to what Karen said about, um, about uh, how, how to really think about their lives holistically and empowering them um, to, to really be able to grasp hold um, of the plans that God has for them. So it was a really amazing time um, in China. I was there for three and a half years. Um, following that, my husband and I got married and we both um, ended up going to um, getting our MBAs at Northwestern. So we both went to school together um, for, for two years in Kellogg in Chicago. Um, I majored in marketing strategy. A lot of my mentors were in the marketing space and really wanted to pivot my career in that, in that direction. And the Lord, um, through a lot of prayer, uh, we said we wouldn't leave China until he gave us an opportunity um, elsewhere. And that's where he landed us both at Kellogg. Um, and my husband uh, majored in, in analytics and operations. Following our time at Kellogg, um, again, just a lot of soul searching. We really wanted to head back to Asia. Um, and so through a lot of prayer and a calling to missions, we both um, applied and both ended up going to Nike, um, feeling like they would be able to bring us back to Asia. And that was part of the, the original plan um, that we had worked out. And so I went there in brand marketing, um, had an amazing time working on some really fun like World Cup campaigns, working with uh, Ronaldo and Neymar, some of the big soccer stars, as well as um, other, our other marketing areas. So it was a really amazing time. And as, I just really want to paint kind of this like picture of where we were headed. And for me personally, a calling back to Asia was something really important to me, um, both from a career, but also just like a, a calling and mission standpoint. Um, and so you could say that that in a lot of ways was like my dream. Um, and in a lot of ways, what I had personally called, uh, saw as my destiny and my calling. Um, however, I, I, I do, the, the crux of this conversation is actually really one where um, I've learned something very different um, in that journey where, um, where we actually found out that we were in a very different place. Uh, we, we found ourselves in a very different place in 2019, and I'll go into a little more deeper. Um, but as you saw, that, that path upwards was, was in the back of my mind. Like, I just got to keep climbing, even though what we learned about from Jesus is that following Jesus is a, is a journey downward. Um, and there's everyone who looks to follow Jesus, it's, it's, it cannot be. Um, and no matter, no matter what, um, a journey up, upward for, for one's own personal kingdom. And so um, I would say during this time, um, I, I really looked into the story of Joseph um, and, how, and how his story also began with a dream um, that he shared with all his friends and family. Um, and it was a dream of, of this amazing uh, kind of role that he was going to have and people were going to bow down to him. Um, and, and what I learned through this journey, and you'll hear this, this theme throughout, which is the difference between a dream and a calling 
is that a dream hasn't been sanctified for his purposes yet. Dreams are about who you want to be or be perceived, um, and a calling in a dream is about who you're becoming. Um, and it, personally, this is something that I really had to struggle with um, as someone who is um, ambitious and not probably ambitious in the way that Karen was talking about earlier. Um, so I have a question for all of us. Um, have you ever ended up somewhere where you never planned on being? Um, so this, this really kind of goes into the story of, of where we found ourselves in 2019. So as we were headed out, um, two offers in hand, um, really, really excited to go back to Asia, um, promotions on, for both Matt and I together, we actually, um, a huge pivot happened in one fell swoop uh, last year where um, everything just fell through in one instance. And I do remember myself sitting in that car weeping uh, next to my husband who was just like shell shocked. Um, I'm, more emotional than him in that way. And I was just weeping um, at the loss of, for me, what it felt like everything. My plans on going to, back to Asia, our family plans, our, um, me personally, my dream job, my dream career, a, like a director role that I had been working for for the last four years, everything just fell through in one instance. And for me, it just, it just, it just had such a deep sense of loss. I just felt like I was looking at an abyss. Um, and I remember in that moment, um, there was a really, really powerful message that came out. Um, and it was, it was about the story of Paul headed to Rome. And, uh, and I remember the pastor asking, have you ever ended up somewhere where you have not planned on being? And he talked about how Paul was headed to Rome and he was shipwrecked on Malta. And he said, we will suffer loss, but we will not lose what's most important. And I ask you, have you ever been to Malta? Is what I'm saying resonating? Is Malta a season you didn't plan on experiencing? Is Malta the layoff you didn't see coming? Is Malta the relationship you didn't see ending? Is Malta an emotional place you never thought you'd experience? And in so many ways, what we were experiencing is we, we looked at each other while listening to that message and we're like, we're on Malta. And so I wanted to show you as we talked about this journey downward, which in so many ways feels like death, um, death can, de these detours that happen in our lives, um, especially in the season that we're in um, with COVID-19, with pandemics, with society just being upturned and changed in every, every way possible. Um, our individual lives, there's so many detours happening and often we're just, we feel stranded and often it feels like death. And, um, and I think the reason why God allows our dreams and our callings to go through this kind of upside down pyramid turn is for this, this beautiful sanctification process that he leads us to. And so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that um, now. And so in that fell soup, I, I'm just going to bring us back to that moment when I was sitting in the car crying. Um, the, I, we called up our pastors immediately and just said, hey, we need, we need help. Um, and I remember running into the room. They were just immediately like, let's meet up. And I remember running to the room, just like weeping. And, um, one of the women, uh, one of the dear sisters of mine just like hugs me. And she says, you know what, Jess, like, you may not have a job. You may not have, you may not have a calling to China or Asia right now, but you know what? God loves you. You know, God loves you so much. And, um, and I looked at her and I, and I'm weeping and I said, you know, I know that, but I don't love me. And there was something really deep inside that that sh that happened, where I felt like I felt like I really did realize that even though I had known all the biblical stories, like you know, God loves me, um, there was something really deep there around like my career ambitions and also just um, what I had imagined my destiny to look like. Um, and and I think what I realized was like in in the very fundamental piece of it was that like. I had imagined my own destiny and, and God actually wanted to refine it through what he does to those that he loves through pruning. And so I want to read this verse in John 12, 24. It says, very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. And, and so there was one brother who said to us, I remember like in the very, like the first two days that everything happened, he said, you know, if you came to Asia with your shiny MBAs and your shiny Nike jobs, um, there's probably a lot of ways that you wouldn't be able to minister and love the people that God's calling you to because they, they struggle day in, day out with their careers and with their jobs. And, and, and to come from this perspective, it would be really, really hard um, to really connect in the way that you guys desire to. 
And so that was one thing that really came and I think struck us really deeply. Um, I think um, this, the second piece, these five D's that I, I feel like the Lord brought us to one being death. And the second one, um, God brings us through deliverance. Um, the second piece of deliverance um, is that after going through this period of death, God, it, we could not dig ourselves out of that hole. Like there was just no way, like it had to be an actual experience of Jesus saving us from ourselves. Cause I think what we realized was that what, what happened in that death was that a lot of like old internal demons that were there that we were struggling with came out. Um, and things like, who am I without a job? Um, like what about our marriage when we don't have, like what happens when we're strapped for cash? Like what, like these things that you normally don't have to face day to day life because everything's so comfortable. Um, and so we ended up going through a really deep period of counseling, um, of, of really powerful internal individual counseling as well as marriage counseling. And, um, I would say that the only way, um, that we got saved was allowing Jesus into our brokenness. And he, I, I would say just like in a lot of ways, Joseph was, was jailed, um, physically after, after going through that, that journey of his big dream, death, and then being jailed and being set free from that jail. I think in so many ways we found freedom in the jails that we had found ourselves in. Um, and then, and then it really came a season of just going deeper with the Lord of just waiting and staying in the pain and staying and allowing the sanctification to do the work. Um, and, and, and just holding on to Jesus. And so we actually made it, um, a really, really solid decision, um, which is kind of that fourth bucket, a solid decision to stay in the pain and to stay in the sanctification. Um, and also not to try to get out of it by looking for other jobs. And so we actually took a six month break last year of, um, I was very tempted to be on LinkedIn, uh, but God actually, um, through his grace gave me, I would say staying power where I was like, okay, we'll wait we'll wait on the Lord's leading. And, and through that, he actually ended up bringing on this amazing journey in those six months where we, we met some of the most amazing people um, that are our closest friends to, to this day through that journey. Um, and, and also just being with the Lord and then unity in our marriage that we had never experienced before um, in such a powerful way. Um, and so that, that was something that was really, really um, special to me in that time that actually I look back and I'm like, our marriage would never be the same if it were not for that. Um, and so I would say on this piece, just around decision, um, a lot of times it's decision to, to wait on the Lord. Um, it's also a decision to follow him as he leads and it may not be something you want. And so the, the, the shift in the story is that the Lord actually brought us to, um, uh, my husband an opportunity in the Bay area, which is why we're here today. Um, and I had to make a decision for the first time in my life to go somewhere without a job, to go somewhere with. Um, and to not lead and drive our family as I'm used to doing and, and submit myself to my husband, submit myself to the Lord and his leading and be like, okay, God, this is not going to feel good, but let's go to the Bay. Let's go back to the Bay. Um, and what you have for me there. Um, and it was, it was a leap of faith. And I would say I was really angry for about my, my husband could testify. I was really angry for about a month and a half. Um, and, um, but what, what happened was as we were here in the Bay, we ended up meeting a really amazing group, including Cheryl and those at Passion Talk um, and seeing that we actually had such alignment of spirit and heart. Um, and so what I really want to share today is that destiny is not a place that you end up. Destiny is not a place you end up. It is a place where it is God's greatest pruning in your life, but it's also a place where you get the sweetest relationship with Jesus. And so this quote that I really want to leave with you is just this quote by Frederick Buechner, your vocation in life is where your greatest joy meets the world's greatest need. But I would say there's one more piece on that. It's also where God um, desires to sanctify you and make you more reliant on him than ever. And so that's, that's really um, how I, I would love to encourage all of us today uh, to think about um, your journey and where God's calling and leading you to. And so I, I'll just end on these um, an invitation um, for those to pray for those of us who um, are, are at uh, some of the, the biggest tech companies really seeking the Lord um, and, and seeing where he would lead us. Again, feel free to reach out on LinkedIn if you want to have more conversations. Um, and these are, again, some of the, the stories I mentioned, as well as um, some of the books that I highly recommend as I've read through my journey um, in this last few years. So thank you guys so much. Wow, Jess, thank you. And I really appreciate how you um, redefined or reframed some of these things like, you know, what is a dream? 
and what is destiny. So thank you for giving all of us really like needy things to think about. Um, that was terrific. I, um, I wanted to ask you just one follow-up question because I know that, um, you know, there may be people who are listening in or watching who have questions about like career choices, whether they are, you know, younger or newer in their careers and really trying to navigate uh, what field that God might be calling them to or, or maybe um, as a more established person in their careers thinking maybe I need to change, um, you know, do I go into nonprofit or do I do something different? I'm just wondering, do you have any to share about how do you how do you discern what direction God is leading you when it comes to kind of career choices like that? Yeah, no, that's such a good question. Um, I I personally would say that for me, all of the career choices I made were a lot through like deep mentorship um, and through people that I would say like them ten years ahead of me and being like that is what I want. Like that's that's the kind of either life. Um, career um, that I, I can dream of and, and would love to be in. And so if you know people like that, and I would say definitely specifically in the kingdom and seeing them be able to live out that faith, just one is all it takes and just drawing near um, to them and, and really um, kind of holding on to them as like a Paul and Timothy and allowing them to speak into your life um, and giving you direction. Of course, spend as much time as you can in the word and, and listening and, and also knowing yourself, um, knowing what you love. Um, but for me, like, I would say, like, I have two very special mentors, um, who really helped me kind of switch over, as you saw a lot of switches in my, in my own personal journey, um, into brand. And so that, yeah, just people that you really respect, especially kingdom leaders, they make all the difference. Great advice. Jess, thank you so much for that advice and for sharing your story and sharing so many um, wise words with us today. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much.